Hey guys, Andy with Fathom Offshore here. I'm sitting with Matt Maldwin from the Click Through. Uh, a couple seconds ago, we were just shooting the breeze in between a couple of these videos, and I was talking to him about the hook set that they're running on the Click Through. I had seen in uh, a couple instances, um, you know, pretty recently, and, and asked him a little bit about why they did that, and that kind of spawned. Uh, some other conversation that I thought before we got into it I'd probably kind of ask Matt about. So um, this is the way that we're typically running our our lures here when we're, when we're blue marlin fishing. So this is 500, 530 uh, extra hard Mamoy monofilament with a with a heavy wall crimp and, and thimble here. Um, anywhere from 20 to 25 feet our blue marlin packs come with, with 20 foot but uh, and then the way that we're doing these here, let's see if I can kind of show you without sticking this hook uh, buried up into my hand is so we have a similar connection here uh, heavy wall crimp that goes to a chafed single loop line um, and then the connection there some people will use uh, electrical tape Matt but what we're using is um, rescue tape which is like a high tensile strength uh, a lot of boats have it on there too in case they bust a tube or a pipe or something and it it's it's waterproof water resistant um, it, you won't end up with it unraveling on you and it, it holds a really nice tight connection there so um, that's something that we're doing uh, going to a double spun 920 hook set now um, we talked a little bit about one of the questions I had asked Matt was on on their boat they've got uh, electrical tape usually colored electrical tape occasionally uh, wrapped up to about halfway up up the throat of the hook yeah. um, and so why why is that and what kind of like function does that that serve? Well first of all we start off with the roll of electrical tape and you take a razor blade and cut at least down into the roll the section so you're only using so you're split width of half yeah okay as opposed to an inch you're now working with a quarter uh, quarter inch or so yeah right? half an inch whatever yeah. the half of the diameter that is but yeah we'll start um from down here and wrap our way up that way the water flow doesn't hit the lips of the electrical tapes but similar to the way that fish scales are kind of laid on top of each other more hydrodynamic exactly as exactly but we do that one thing it, it prevents it corrosion or if you're not using a stainless steel hook and rust and so forth from it but it also allows you um an idea if you miss a fish um what it might be looking at the teeth marks or bill marks in it just like you would on your leader if you got chafe on your leader from right. a marlin sometimes it might not be up there may might but you might see it on that electrical tape so if it's there. worth yeah worth staying in the area trying to chase something or if you're just right. getting meat whacked while you're bill fishing so okay so identification so i assume one of the questions i had um that i believe the answer to be is that it's, it comes up to here it doesn't really uh hinder your your hookup with it not being able to penetrate deep enough or I assume once it gets to that point you're yeah, already in them exactly and one thing that we do is it's imperative when you cut that electrical tape to use I prefer scissors but a sharp knife a razor blade so many people take that electrical tape and just pull it and pop it or whatever right yeah and you do that, it's going to start unraveling on you. Mm -hmm. If you Last cut thing it with you a want sharp blade, right. tail behind your lure, either messing up the action or getting squirrely. Um, another thing we had talked about, so uh, uh, is taking a lighter and kind of heating and flaring. I know you guys do this on all your leaders and yeah, we do it on all our tournament stuff. Um, go ahead when you're making the actual uh, connection to your. Are you doing it top and bottom? Everywhere. Everywhere. Okay. Every time you're using a crimp somewhere, I even do it on my outriggers, just force to have it. Yep. So you're basically what we're talking about is pulling that mono through, and then heating up your flare. That's actually going to create the mono film. It almost mushrooms out, kind of like paracord or rope when you're when right, you light right. it. And then at that point in time, you can either take a, a you know pair of scissors or even just let it cool down, but push it kind of flat, and that creates a yeah. <laughs> that creates kind of a flare that um, we've even heard stories of uh, a flare like that mate not crimping the uh, the crimp at all and the flare alone holding that that on so um, compounded with a, a well crimped uh, piece of tackle which you should always have um, that creates a pretty strong connection that's that's not going to come undone so um, also to just one last quick thing 
Um, I know a lot of the hooks I see that, that you guys have, and I do this as well. Um, maybe some people know about it, maybe they don't, but uh, a lot of times you see Sharpie up here on the, the tip of the hook. Yeah. And um, the reason I do that is to fill in the, the micro striations of when I'm sharpening uh, a hook set. Um, what you're doing is you're actually wearing that electroplating off with the with the um, uh, the, the file. So you want to go in and fill that sharpie. You'll actually fill those indentions in uh, to where you're not going to rust or create kind of a weak point on the tip of that hook. Is exactly. I assume that's yeah, what you guys we practice are. that all the time as well. Okay, so cool. We hope these are some good tips for you guys for rigging big game uh, blue marlin stuff. And definitely, if you got any questions, uh, put them in the comments. Be sure to hit like, subscribe, and uh, we'll keep doing some more of these for you.